G'day everyone and welcome to this week's edition of the Melbourne Punter Show. As usual, Darren Potter. Uh, Juppie, how are you mate? Host track Ralphie Horrell. Yes, hello Ralphie. Juppie, hello Ralphie. Uh, uh, I'm Dan Kelly for the day. And, uh, <laughs> Part we'll, of the rotation. We'll, we'll do our best, exactly. Um, but this is proper Melbourne winter now, Potts. You're in your own moment. Pissing down outside and heading wise. Yeah, controversy. So, so, uh, <laughs> well, poor old BZ copped it yesterday. I was down at Sale and uh, he was hosting down there. And I was lucky they moved the bookies into the bar there, but they didn't move the uh, the makeshift TV studio, which is just the marquee they bought at Bunnings about six years ago. Uh, and I think by about race seven, BZ couldn't feel the bottom half of himself. So, and yes, it's cold down here. Well, long way to Coogee from Sale. BZ. <laughs> it definitely was. Um, Boys, we were back at Mooney Valley on Saturday for the first meeting in 14 weeks. Best um, Good to have it back, apart from the betting ring, but other than that, it was all right. It was a bit chilly out there. <laughs> well, you must have had a good day, Ralphie, did you? You sound like you enjoyed it? Well, uh, and we'll get to the races, but um, the, I'll, I'll put my foot down on longer on where it was drifted, but uh, I avoided the trap races, which, uh, which I think is part of what needs to be pretty important. I've had a bad run for a few weeks. A bit unlucky, a bit uh, yeah, the usual. Back, back your own judgment. You're going to have times where it's bad luck, and times you think I should have done it this way. But um, what I really notice is that this time of year on these wet tracks, you're just going to pick and choose, don't you? Yeah, I think so. I think there's a lot in that. I think um, my setup to that was pretty good, except for the thousand meter races, which my assessments in those races weren't bad, but they're just really full of races, and I think they were the trap races on Saturday, and I think. Um, as thousand metre races is something we need to be very careful of. Um, well, because fitness is such a premium at this time of year. Um, yeah. So, by its very nature, a thousand metre race is going to have a lot of presuming horses or yeah. And that's just enough to throw the market or your head heads base out, particularly if one is friendless, which we'll get to. So, I think that's, that's part of the art. Did, are, are you a Mooney Valley fan in yeah. general? In general, I am. I, I, I don't really like those tracks when they get the wide positions when it's every leader wins. Yeah. Because I think on those tracks, the jockeys ride very much out of their horses, out of their patterns. Yeah. And, you know, it's easy to say find the winner, find, sorry, find the leader, find the winner. But sometimes it's easy to say the because older horses can lead. But um, I had no problem betting there on Saturday. It raced exactly as I expected it to race. And isn't that, in a nutshell, if it races how you expect it to, yeah. as a pun, I don't think you can ask much more. <laughs> no, I think that's Anyway. I've got to say, I was confused about how it was going to race. I, I looked at so what'd you do? some conflicting information from the same period last year. So I hopped in my car and went out the Mooney Valley and, and spent an hour and a half walking around it. What did so, teach you? Well, it was, um, the further away from the railway you got, the softer it got. So I, I just I was convinced when I left that you were not going to be able to circle from the back. Is it a flat so, surface? And is that <laughs> the of some other tracks? So it t- tends to be once the rail's out three, because I haven't walked and I don't need to. I was, um, I was MC out there during the night season for yeah. four years. So much, to me, I thought, well, other than it being the first time for 40 weeks and you really had a mini renovation, when the rail's out three and it's wet, this is how it's going to play, and that's what it did do. I don't think it was a mini renovation, Ralph. Like, it was absolutely... Um, we mentioned it a, a while ago, like, um, lots of DK came out and met me there at that meeting on Labor Day, which was the last meeting there, and we went up and had a drink at the Tabaret, and you could see how badly chopped up that track well, was. Root, root disease or it had aphids, which affected the, the, the root depth. So it's done a good job. And to get it back to where it is, but, I mean, in hindsight... I th- I'm, I'm led to believe that Packenham has a similar issue, an aphid issue out there too. Hence the reason they probably couldn't have transferred the midweek meeting there and moved um, the Saturday meeting to Sandown, which um, meant that they could have left Mooney Valley alone for a longer period because I think it's nearly getting to the stage now where it's not going to be a winter track anymore if they keep going at this rate. I was told by someone who would know, the problem also with Packenham is Kayakuya. Yes. It's not going to be a winter track. It's going to be a very good summer track. Yeah. Oh, it's like, as far as I'm concerned, it's. It and Flemington are probably the two best tracks in the state. And I, I hope they don't run on it when it's wet because I want it kept in that condition because it's like you're saying, sometimes we have good periods and bad periods. Well, how do I deal with the periods where I'm just completely cursed? Which is what we have at the minute. Um, but it's a joint where I know that I can go there and I know that I can win. So um, I'm glad that it's stuff. But, but the, the track did play exactly how I sort of envisioned it. Like I ran into Craig Williams in the car park on. Um, Thursday, uh, on Wednesday at Sandown and asked him if he walked it yet. He said no, he hadn't walked it, but he 
he worked a couple there on the Tuesday morning and said, yeah, like it's going to cut out. Like the, we were out working out wide and we were kicking up big units. So it wasn't, it wasn't. See, but that's the thing, Jackie. I'm so thinking. Working them out wide, yeah, and you're not learning. That gave him yeah. no indication. If he, if he had walked that track, he would have realised that the inside section, so yeah. hard fence, one off and three off, the the, the, turf, the turf was different to yeah. what it was beyond that, and it got slower and slower. So wide went. So where he worked those horses at earlier in the week would have given him a false impression, I would think, of what to expect. So by extension, for both of you. Is that an unfair track? Because I have a banner with people on Twitter. I think one of the things that I reckon to take that step as a punter, and I had to do it, I've always yep. had to do it, but you have to say, I reckon your natural inclination when you start watching racing is to overrate flash over horses. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's just natural. Yep. Wow, God, how lucky was that? But in reality, particularly once you see the 200 metre breakdown, you see how fast they go early and really often the slowest 200 is the last 200. And to us, that's second nature. But to, people watching this and maybe trying to learn more, it's not. No. no speed, no talent is one of the Mark Landau's best ever pearls. Yeah. And you need to have the ability to put yourself in the race. And at Rooney Valley, that's required. Quite, yeah. And then at the end of the day, when people often throw their heads in the air and go, well, it's the leader's track. Who won? Well, the best horses yeah. on the day one, both on Saturday, and even on Cox Plate Day, where yes, it was a disadvantage out wide. In the end, Wicks won, champion. The United States won. Gone on a win uh, yeah. group one. Uh, Holland's gone on a winning group one. Uh, and there was two others on the day that's gone on a winning group one. Uh, two loose. There was only one horse that I thought was the best horse. There was one horse there on Saturday that I thought was the best <coughs> horse that didn't win, but we'll get to that in a later. But that will with, happen. Yeah, but with, yeah. Wow. Well, well, I just, the only disagreement of what you're is, so I'm, saying, I'm agreeing with a lot of what you're saying, but I felt sorry, for instance, for Roberts Murden and the con connections of Quantesa. Okay, she's not a She's not really got enough speed to lead a thousand metre race. Yeah. She's drawn the outside. She's going to, going to have to sit wide. We'll go back to last. Try and sneak up the fence. There are only two choices. So she she was really in a race where on a track that was even right across. Yep. She would have been a really strong winning chance. So the two days scratched. That's probably the next question. Well, I think if they had walked the track, they would have. So whose fault's that? No, no, no. no oh, that's a fair point. Yeah. And I've been so like, my inclination was to. Look at that race, and just I was attracted to Pontesa, yeah. But I just I didn't I, I didn't back it, I didn't I only back one horse in that race that I thought would be in the right position, so it's all the music, or whatever it was, yeah. Um, and I avoided uh, the favourite, what's it called? Strikingly, I don't know, strikingly, and uh, yeah. Pontesa because they just were going to get caught on the part of the track that was going to give you no hope, so. I can, you know, from a punting point of view, I, th that kind of track where there were at least there were three lanes that were usable. Yeah. I think that's I, th that you can that that gives you enough to work with as a punter because you want to find the horses that are going to dominate those three lanes. And like even a horse like um, uh, Prince of Brooklyn, for instance, that drew wide, yeah. went back the fence, last come up the fence and yeah. got through the field. Bench. He almost yeah. had the lucky win. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You, you accept that that might happen to you. Yeah. But if you would have back first hand and bass in that race, you'll win it an awful lot of times. Yes. You know, because they're going to be in the dominant spot. So I think as a punter it gives you a lot to work with, but owning horses on that track, I would have thought, you know, if you drew an outside gate and you were to go for a horse, it would have been frustrating. And even in race two, where they went horribly slowly, the jockeys really let, the, let their connections down in that race. And But the, the, the reality was, it was, a t it was a field of horses there was a field with no leader. Yeah. There was no natural go forward horses in the race. It was up to the jockeys to then recognise that and put the you know the horses in the market into the race like Dwayne Little Nesbo, which he just didn't he just didn't do, you know, he conceded the feet. I'm talking about the integrity you started coming out. But one other point for your own work, uh, with Mooney Valley on Sunday and probably you would know this walk in the track. It's really come through on Vince Carty's figures is from the six hundred to two hundred it was probably heavy. Mm. Yeah. Last 200, probably a five. Did you find the home straight firmer when you walked? Or not? A little bit. So the figures. Yeah. So the theory from that end is, so not only are you saying it was disadvantage out wide, it's yeah, probably looked obvious on the, on the yeah, but you didn't work. 
Uh, but then also, the leaders, if they had momentum, unlike an Appalachian Adam Eddie that was gassed, but if they had any momentum, they actually got to the fastest part of the track, track first. first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fair advantage. And the thing is, Mooney Valley's always going to be like that down the side, because it just it's a natural phenomenon. It just doesn't get as much sun as yeah. what the rest of the track does. So in relation to Craig Williams' comments, jump in, I, I don't think the track actually didn't chop out that badly. I thought it held up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. It and the, 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 the part of the track that was firmest, which was the inside three lanes, actually got more of an advantage as the day went on. So, you know, whereas, you know, the some expected the wide lanes to come into play later in the day. I was convinced that wasn't going to happen. So, anyway, spot on. Um, we kicked off with race one, which was uh, taken out by Artie D2, who beat uh, Tanapi Lady. Tanapi Lady was another one of the uh, unseen Mick Ken horse, private jump outs down the back straight. Uh, can't wait to get out there on Wednesday to Cranbourne and try and catch up with Neil Bunyard so we can try and get something sorted with this issue. Yeah, come on, Neil. Give us, Neil, just give us a break. Come on, just give, a, just give us those jump outs, mate. Like, it's got beyond the joke. Now, this is two Saturdays in a row where we have to leave the two year old race alone. So, it was Southern Wind last week, and, or Southern Wind, or whatever it was called. Now, we've got 10 happy ladies, and you just, you know, it's not. Why would he upset the local trainers? It's well, up to RVL to say we run this report yeah, and this is our requirement from eight trainers. Well, I'd, I'd, I'd appeal to Neil and to the trainers out there if there are no punters, there will be no prize money. You know what I mean? So don't take punters for granted. They've got too many other options. And serving up Saturday races with yeah, we've two year olds where you can't view a recent trial. I mean, in that case, that horse had been in Sydney previously, and you can look at a Sydney trial, which is kind of irrelevant because it was back in December or something. But um, you know, like, I just don't, I don't, I really don't understand the attitude of whoever's controlling things at Cranbourne in not providing us with this information. And it should, and look, the RV's got to take control of it, and it's got to happen across the board. I mean, it was good, there's been winners come out of those Avoca trials. Yeah. That's a start, but there, there's, there's still a lot of trials at Geelong and Ballarat and other places that we're not seeing jump outs, whatever they want to call them. And it's, uh, it's you know, we're not, we're, we're not even complaining about the, the pain that you have to go through to find which jump outs horses are in at Flemington, <coughs> for instance. You know what I mean? Like the system they've got with their little YouTube channel and the PDF documents that come up as a web page are very painful. You know what I mean? Sometimes you can spend hours trying to find all the jump outs for a horse. You know, you, you had trouble finding the one. So I did. Yeah, for, for Wall Street Wolf the other week. You know what I mean? I mean, we're, we're, oh, we're, we're, I found something on Twitter. I found something on Twitter. I always say it's not personal, except if I say it's personal. This isn't personal or broad one worth. But this is on Twitter, so it's all public. So Matt Welsh sends out after run somewhere like a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Two dollars out the two seventy suggests there are very few bother to watch jump outs. Not sure why so many want them private. Yeah. So in actual fact, it, it, it tried like a jet. Yeah. Jumped out like a jet. It's fantastic. I think we'll get the robots chat later, but I don't think the robots take that into account. No. I mean, that's, you know, sometimes you know, there's a reason why they don't, but every now and then you find an agent, and I think runs always one. Paul Bloodworth from RVL then said, Isn't it not, not sure why so many want them public? Now, Matt, the point, Bella and another than post videos of outfields, our biggest training man just to jump his head from total privacy. Paul responded. Uh, but weren't you lamenting that even though it jumped out well, it drifted, suggesting no one watched the jump out anyway? Adam, the punters want proper trial, as Adam Blanco from Much Mid Sports, want proper trials, not just to back the trialers. And this is what the racing people want. Yeah, this is the key point. Not just to back the trialers, but bet others in the race without complete unknowns. Correct. You exactly. can't so Paul, and I, Paul and I had a phone conversation about a Mick Kent runner yeah. at Caulfield a couple of months ago. Okay, It ended up drifting and starting 20 to 1. I didn't bet in the race. If I'd have seen it jump out, I probably would have eliminated it as a chance. So, so Paul, the answer to your question is, mate, no matter what way you spin it, whether it's putting you onto a horse or off a horse, it's, pro it's limiting turnover by not having this footage available. Like, this is the second week in a row we've let a two-year-old race go. No involvement, because Mick Kent's had a runner. Like a, it's the third Saturday in the past couple of months. I'm going to break it down. I'm not going to make it... I'm a simple man. Paul, give us the information and we'll decide if it's important or not. Let us fuck it up. We'll deal with it, but if we're asking <laughs> we you for it, 
we might use it, we might need it. Just give it to us and we'll sort it out. Same with Cambrian, same with all these other ones. Just give us as much information as, as you can and then we'll deal with it. And it will help you turn over. Ralphie raised a good example last week at Sandown. Here the chair one had, had jump outs. They were, they were the sort of jump outs that you could view in different ways. You know what I mean? I, was a, I thought they were okay. I didn't think they were that good. But you can form an opinion. I formed an opinion. So I bet in that race. That's the point. I bet in that race. My subscribers bet in that race. As opposed to the race on Saturday where I didn't even bother doing the form for it. So, you know, you, uh, yeah. racing crew is going to decide what they want. Do they want to maximise turnover? Or do they want to sort of hedge around and try and sweep the issue under the carpet? Life is a minimum bet rule. Life is a minimum bet Hang on. They I'm don't need to understand why you drink. But they, sorry, they don't need to be better. They don't need to be punters. Yeah. They need to understand what makes people want to punter. I've, yeah, I've got another way of tackling this. Let's get the 17 most senior people at Racing Victoria, send them to Hong Kong for a week. <laughs> And see if Hong Kong think it's important that we can all see the jump out. I'm happy for that to happen. Here's a racing quiz for you. During the week, Hong Kong announced some breeders' voters. No. In Victoria. Yes. Very important. That's because we need we need all these horses to be bred so we can pay prize money down to teeth. Anyway, so with uh, Vince Cardi's work, I've got him here. Um, I think we can really follow the first two of the conference, having said all that. Yeah. I think Artie was pretty smart. And yeah. if it got, it was three wide yeah. on a day where you have like some sand down meetings where people go, wow, that was a good effort three wide, it was actually the best spot. It won't be the best spot. And 10 happy ladies show very good speed over 1200, which is always a test for a two year old. So, start, yeah. even trained on me. so you would think it's going to improve. So let's see if we can step the first two. Uh, here's a race. They look, they look, on face value, they looked all run quite good figures, but they did get first use of their track, so I'm not, I, I, that, it does look on paper to be worthwhile for them. Uh, race two was, um, you could have, is it old Jack Styron used to say, you could have gone past them on a punctured bicycle. Um, where are we? That, uh, this I'm led to believe they ran the fastest two, four and up, six hundred home. Uh, if you want to do things without context, and uh, what's the other saying? Uh, don't break the fish. In other words, I, I yep. like it when misinformation gets out there, but let's give our viewers the right information. Okay. So, shock and we ran the best last 600, 400, and 200. Okay, so Tick. that part was right. Yep. He ran the 25th best last 800. Okay. So, the race started at the 600 meter. Correct. Yep. It was like the old trots. So, yep. so, we're going to get to race three. We'll leave it after we do race two. <laughs> But longer on said OSL outside the lead of uh, Sand Hill Chief. So 35 minutes later, we had the same track and distance. So let's say we had the same conditions. I think we can be pretty confident that. To the 800 metre mark, shock and rolling was going. Drum rolling. 39.8 lengths. 39.8 lengths slower than race three leader for the first 1400. So if you extrapolate that over the course of a race, it was the equivalent of going 50 length style, wasn't it? So the point is, all the other jockeys apart from Michael Walker ought to be ashamed of themselves. They have absolutely not participated in the race. And sure, it could just be, it's just incompetence, okay? And I back the winner, so, you know, what, you know it's, a, it's a happy race for me. Nice night out, But I just, the incompetence of the other jockeys in that race, particularly the ones in the market, so, like, you know, Mick Cannon, they had a track walker. Dwayne Dunn, they had a track walker. They, they could have had Nesbo sitting outside the lead or on pace for sure. And then Dwayne got off the fence and got out into the worst part of the track. So, maybe he wasn't a noted track walker on Saturday. I don't know. It was a pretty poor effort, though. Well, we'll talk about the question in part two when it comes to the integrity side. Because I think we've got some pretty relevant parts that add up to the questions that were asked and weren't asked the job. From a going forward perspective, I think when the race is at Simon, we can stand anything. No, no. Yeah. Uh, race three, as Ralphie mentioned, was taken out by Longeron. Yeah. Uh, God bless you. Now, why do you reckon it drifted? Here's the question. So it's 280 in the morning, best. 430 on the fence, best when they jumped. 380 officially. I don't think there was a terrible amount of money in the ring for it, if you no, can remember on. It was one of those races where I wanted to back, turn it around and longer on. But I told, said to my subscribers, 
you don't take the current fixed price on either horse, I think they'll both drift. I just think by race morning there was still you know at least 25 percent in the market percentage, yeah, had to come out. and it had to go somewhere. And what does that mean for people who are trying to learn a bit better? Well, if, if you'd have taken the best price that you, you could find available on every horse, yes. you still would have, and you and you backed them all to win hundred dollars, you still would have lost twenty five. Yeah. So there's a lot of percentage in that market. They both had the drift. So I, I just think it was a case of market percentage more than. Do you think also? Else, you know, because if, if, like you, Ralph, yeah. you particularly like long line, and you didn't, and yet you found reasons to dismiss turn it around or. I love both. I love both. Yeah, well, yeah. But I didn't like the pricing. So I was yeah. Happy. So I'm, I'm sort of thinking. How about this? People had a really strong opinion on it, race would have been able to back. That's why they were so short, as short as they were. Well, we right? missed Dan here because Dan, Dan is the robot watcher of all yes. these robot watches. But maybe I'm thinking that they both came out of a relatively slow race. The previous day. Yes. And that was through tempo. Yeah. And they both came out of a relatively slow race. The previous day. Yeah. And that was through tempo. Yeah. But. Uh, Longer on had come off a murderous tempo race to start before that Kenji would yeah, won. I'm sure there's one Kenji would won, but either yeah, way, yeah, he, he went ridiculously quickly. So I was happy to stand for as a flat run, a narrow defeat. But maybe the robot said, well, your previous start was slow and you haven't won for a while. And then so it just let you out a bit. So that, maybe that's, that's what it was. But I'm telling you, this is a good race game. Not because it was so much faster than the other, because we get it. I think it was a really fast race in the day. And, uh, and there's a number of reasons to like others, even down to as far as thinking old crafty person. Yeah, well, I'm going to go. Yeah, alcohol's a um, funny one. He's a good horse in his bed. He's a Mooney Valley horse. Yeah. yeah, I'm not interested in backing any of those horses. What about Sensification Court Wide going into a trip next up? Oh, he's a, sorry, he's a team back in one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, we're still on T McAvoy watching. <laughs> Alcohol also makes you funny, makes me lose stuff. Um, race four, uh, Clemency flashed down the outside and beat uh, Lacroix, and the truck loaded Mar Jones around third. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot to say really. I mean, the, 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 the biggest issue in the race is why Chris Parnham chose to move himself off Lacroix's back on the home turn and move out wider on the track to you know towards the inferior ground when he was no guarantee to get the run out there if he had to stay on Lacker's back he would have probably won the race oh, I, I, I did the IQ thing several times because it was on Mar Jones yes. and I wanted to criticise him I would have felt better even if it wasn't rational mm. but I, I, I think in complete fairness to Chris Digger Pony was going nowhere so he got off Digger Pony's back yeah. then he saw Craig Williams on clemency and then he was going that quick I always had that much momentum, he thought, well, I've got to try and get past it. So he went again. So, uh, but then, so there was nothing, for, once he got off the opponent's back, he was, he was directly behind that one. No, but that's what I'm saying. I think he thought he had a turn of foot, so he may as well try and shoulder it out. And, but he, he could have chose the shoulder outside Lacqua, inside Clemency. There was another horse in between them. So it still would have been tight. Or go out behind Clemency and try and come off Clemency's back, which is what he. We found out we have a few jockeys who watch the show. Now they reckon they're going to know what you got. Three people will then be jockeys. Well, oh, fuck them. We're punished. We get our money. So, like, honestly, I back Lacroix and Clemency. So, like, I'm glad that Chris Barney didn't. I just wanted to put the belly out of the eggs in the boat. No, no, no. Um, but anyway, I'm, not a, I'm just pretending that I lost me. I'm not that critical of either fairness, but I think, paradoxically, the horse, it will be over a bit next start, no chance, because it was unlucky. Mm. Yeah, and time. it was struck like the last They dropped yeah. anchors. But one part from the figures to look at is that Clemency came through such a slow early race for the one first yeah. half that even though this was slow early, it was much faster early, if yeah. that makes sense. Set first up, second up. So I think it's going to really springboard again. Yeah, that was a pretty good effort. Yeah. I think, you know, I think really the horse that had all the advantages in the race, which is the one I backed the most heavily was Black Rock. Yeah. And it was, a good, it, was a, it was a good job to get past it, but in reality, no matter which way you spin the luck of the rides and all that business, there's not a lot between those nah. horses. They're mares and they're all sort of around the mark. Yeah. Well, no, clemency, right. I think Clemency was the best run in the race, even though you can make yeah. a case that... You're going for it? Yeah, it was the best run in the race. I can still claim four kilos, though. <laughs> so I haven't given up hope just yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> race five was won by Petit's reward. Uh, sort of a... It was money for strikingly. All I want to say here is well done to our, you know, one of our great men, Rexy, who came on the show with us a few weeks ago. Uh, he, just, he just looked at the map and went, and went, 
pretty easy to back the leader here. It's double the price of Potts's market, and away we go. So well done, Rexy. You know, you're a lot smarter than me, Rexy. I mean, well, it was. Like, if you're smarter than you, where does that leave me? I actually, when I, mean, I did that race, I marked the fourth pick. It was a very easy horse in the ra race to back, and had terrific Mini Valley form. It was going to dominate the right part of the map, but I mean, really, it, how it went around it, over 20 to 1. So I'll give you another one, little plate. This is worth one, Vince, about the anchor drop, right? Because the anchor drop is normally a negative for loaders. If there's a sharp anchor drop and the whole field gets an anchor drop, yeah. you want to be with a loader. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. It makes sense. So that's actually what really comes through with potential rewards figures that at the 800 to 600, uh, it's lost. And then from the 600 to 400, but just the 200 meter increment here, it lost five lengths of speed, so the whole field. Yeah. So then, as you say on the map, its advantage was completely as it looked. Yeah. I think very, it's a very hard thing to predict, as you know, Ralph, whether they're going it's to. A, it's, a, it's, a, it's a thing you see in hindsight, it's hard to oh, yeah. predict really, unless certain jockeys are. And what I say to the jockey, because you said jockeys, some jockeys watch the show, if you watch the show, I would say to you, unless you. Are, Unless you are a horse that you know has really good pickup speed, which is not a very you know, the majority of them don't. Like it's less than ten percent, I would think. Slowing down in front is just never a good idea. You know? Making horses chase you is nearly always a good idea. It takes it, it takes the effort out of them. So this this whole idea of getting to the front and then having a rest for a couple of furlongs is a complete myth unless you're on a horse that's got, you know, genuine acceleration. More often than not, but look, the best case to show you what I mean is both on Pacalo and the last winner. Yeah. Just, oh, just going good. the whole way, yeah. you know what I mean? So, but that, if on Pacalo had to slow down and try to get a rest at any stage, he would have given an opportunity to put several other horses in the race. He took them out of the race by not backing off at any stage. Yeah. Anyway, go on. Uh, race six was uh, taken out by Shivari, and uh, there was a couple of interesting yeah. batting moves here. Um, that Why was it easy? I just now I stayed out of the race, and yeah. you said you should have. <laughs> so go on, go on, get your point. But to me, it was almost a box ticker because uh, I thought, well, unlike some like uh, Appalachian Annie and Pink Perfection, which we'll get to, um, it was rock solid fit. It was a thousand meter horse, thousand yeah. meter horse, thousand meter races. Um, you knew enough pressure would be on to give it a chance to glean into the race. It's remarkable each way odds, but you know, and, so, and, so, and the jockeys, yeah. well, the jockeys can't do well too. Yeah, she's yeah. not really a winner. She's yeah, she's, so she's got a good competitive record, but she doesn't win very often. That's the first problem with her. And, and, well, and she was racing two horses that had pretty much beaten on the merits of the last two starts. So Magna Jim beat her at Sandown, and World of Hope beat her pointlessly at Cranbourne. So yes, you know, by well, default she was she was. She, it was hard for the market to get her in front of them, even though World of Hope had map issues. Magna Jim was, you had to have Magna Jim in front of her in the market, so yes, that's, that, that put her in place. Um, I've got the road line though, and the, yeah, that's right, not back there. Yeah. So, um, the map worked out exactly as I thought it would, which is why I wanted to back up like Trinity and Perfection, but unfortunately, Appalachian Annie got fired up out of the gate, so not necessarily Linda's fault or whatever, but once you're going that quick, Linda, no point slowing down. So the, 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 you trying to get a rest on that horse just allowed the other horses to get close enough to you and you were finished on the home turn. They had momentum and you had none. It'll come right off that. Yeah. But it wasn't a good ride. She, well, we'll talk about... But you're much better off going, once you're going quick, go flat out the whole way. They'll probably still get you late, but at least you make them chase you. The horses like Chivara and stuff didn't have to do much chasing that race. Yeah. In, in part two, we'll talk about we'll the talk drift, to, yeah, the big the perfection drift. drift. Yeah. And uh, same with race seven. Race seven was taken out by first hand, and we'll talk about the protest and whatnot in part two as well. But um, it's a good horse. I think it's a good horse. Yeah, I'm not even sure if it's on the way. Yeah, it's, a, it's a, quite a good effort to win first up on that kind of track. Yeah. Yeah. You know, against you know. I suppose the second horse was first up as well, but Bassett was fit and Bassett probably would have been in the finish without the check, so you'll never really know for sure. Yeah, it's not. But you don't want to be on Bassett sure. next up. No. <laughs> that was Bassett's chance. The others have got upside. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's sort of. The, the, the point is, though, that the two Hawks horses are all running well at the moment. 
some of the marketers that were not Yeah. Well, the last couple of weeks, they, were, they haven't been many runners, so they've run well. So, tell me this. First after, time. did you buy the race? You know, I'm back first hand at Bassett. Yeah. So, so if the protest hadn't been uphill, yeah. I would have been in a coma. No, because it was third versus first. Yeah, so, oh, so second they, would have got the... You back two horses in the race and they interfere with each other. They affect, they both, because it didn't help first hand in yeah. so either, really. So after so, it's have collected, mm. so well done. I started out the race. The, 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 what are the odds was first hand? 260? Yeah, somewhere around there. 320 is better. 320. After a race, are you, did you, do you think you've done the right thing being with it or not outside of your profit and loss, given that it's won by an Irish? Yeah, no, so I think the, the run that Prince of Brooklyn got would have, you know, it was one of those very speculative runs yeah. that sometimes you can win a race like that. But I think... So you're saying if I run it ten times, Prince of Brooklyn probably won't get that luck. No, that's right. And, 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 but either Bassett or um, First Head win the race, an awful lot. I mean, yeah. if you back those two horses with that map configuration on that track um, at those prices, you'll win, you know, very regularly. Yep. So. Race 8, um, young man, friend of the show, Tommy Gilmore, him and his family part own on Piccolo with the cast of thousands out by the look at the photos after the... Well, they get their tactics right. After the race, um, Tommy came up, he was chatting to me at the races, um, so congratulations to them. Uh, to me, watching that race, just thought well, they'd have that race shot that bit's a long way out. Well, I'm a weight sceptic, but I'll concede, under that circumstance, when Don Piccolo's ridden perfectly, yeah. and Kenjiwin's ridden perfectly, and both turn up in good health, then I'll, I'll, I'll concede that situation, seven and a half kilos are handy. And I was a bit hard on, on, on Piccolo when I did the form, and then I look back and I don't know why I was, really. I sort of thought he, he was a danger of a flat run off that brutal race at Sandown when he led. So I suppose that's what I was thinking. And the other three weeks, that was the one thing he used to Yeah, yeah, I just, in hindsight, you know, I've got Kingsley absolutely smashed him, and, and well done Kings, it makes perfect sense to me, really. Like he was, it's one of those races that, it sort of, it, it had occurred to me before I jumped, as soon as the, as soon as the race was happening, I'm on Kenjin Wood, and I'm just thinking, Kenjin Wood's no way of getting on Piccolo here, what am I doing? Can I tell you one thing with Kenjin Wood, though? I'm real, 1,800 moral next though. Maybe 1,600, yeah, yeah. but I reckon he's now looking for further. I think that was where he can do that to the opposition. That was a very good run. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think he's at, at his best at Rooney Valley. Lord Durant is gone at the moment. Yeah, I, I, I they, think he so. He had a big first up run. Yeah. And that might have killed him for the prep. There was an interesting thing. Oh, yeah, but he was in the wrong spot. You know, he was he was in that spot where you had no idea. Well, yeah, moderate, was that? Yeah, yeah. He, he was, and but he didn't. So he, he didn't show the pace that he normally does. No, no, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't. I thought he would. Yeah. I thought he'd sort of push up and get him right. either fourth spot or fifth spot in the end. Gaps, no. So meant, yeah. So we would. He couldn't get him coming. Wouldn't be shy, you know. That's. But then the other real talking point of the race is uh, was it the United States? Yeah, no, chance of the end. Yeah. Uh, yes, sorry. Yeah, yeah, there's a yeah. bit of a drop off there. Take the Hey. Uh, Jay Charles. Oh, Charles, sorry. Get that too mixed up. Anyway, uh, that's a very, I mean, that, that ride needs a bit of explaining, I think. That's, um, yeah, there was no reason really for him to be that far behind the second last ball, so I'd, 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 i and I mean, to, to sit back there and then okay, but try that, and circle them on that track, to me, that's pretty... But, but I'm not going to crucify him as a kid. No, no, no. no but, it was a very good run. He would have rode them in the instructions, but what I'm, I'm saying well, here... Well, then, if, they, if he wrote the instructions, the stewards need the question, what the, why were those instructions given? But, Jesus, okay, okay. I mean, so they, they, were, they were instructions to not, not to win the race. But you're, you're comparing him to first up in September. That run where he was showed that pace and was fantastic. Yeah. Just beat the United States. Shouldn't you take into account Team Williams set their horses for the spring? Yeah. That there's no upside for them to bust their horse early, and hence the winning. I don't see. Oh, I'm saying that. That to me was. Yeah, was he didn't really drift. He was. I mean, he drifted a little bit, but he was sort yeah. of. It was just a percentage coming down rather than yeah. a drift. I think. But it was a really interesting betting race, and yeah, it was one betting race, and it was an odd one for, as someone asked about, the robots. Robots normally love map horses that map well. Yeah. So what they do? 
Oh, this is what I couldn't understand. Hello, Maxie. That's yeah, good, mate. Just talking shit, sorry. So, <laughs> went up 440, 460 around the ring. Bang, that was taken. They took all of that, came in with on Bacala. It's come right in. 380, there was even nibbles at that. It was six dollars best tote. Never moved, did it? No, it was, and normally they're the ones we see it firm like that in the in the ring, and it gets to three eighty, and they go around three twenty best tote because then the robots come in over the top, especially on a map horse like that. And then, like I've looked it up at the screen after it's gone across the line, and the first two things were, why am I on this? Because I've just spent the last half an hour talking to Tom, and second of all, I've gone, how is this thing paid six dollars on the tote when it was always going to leave? By the way, you do know. It wasn't at the back. The uh, chance dance. Oh, oh, maybe I'm going to go with you. No, because I did the same exact TV. Oh, yeah. It was our man and it was right at the back. I wanted to go with the replay. Yeah, no offence to you. So we, we love you too. The one that was at the back finished ahead of. No. No, it was flash over for a minute because just finished just behind chance dance. Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Well, I'll, I'll withdraw all that then because. Yeah. But our man and being out the back makes sense. That's it. Yeah. Like, so I guess I've only watched the the race <laughs> and then the replay immediately after. Yeah. And I haven't completed my review yet, so I haven't gone back and. Yeah. And, and, and what what threw me as well because I actually sent Vince an email saying, "Mate, we've got the wrong way around." And I went there. Oh no, he's got it right. <laughs> of course. So, um, so yeah, if you're doing your replays, switch around our man and then uh, chance. Yeah, it was the, the, the black, the dark cap was yeah. three wide. <laughs> So it's right. very wide. So it's still a good run, and that's yeah. no one's fault. Yeah. Just yeah. And one more thing, TB. I'll tell you what, though, the horse from the back was a good run. Yeah. Jesus. One more thing, TB, and when I do catch up with you, hopefully you might be there tomorrow or something. Don't. It's Lacroix, not Lacquer. <laughs> but that's another issue. Well, that's he nice. knows. Uh, the, the, uh, the two favourites fought out the last boys with it, uh, Voodoo Lad beating Jigger Brunswick. Jigger Brunswick was looking for 1400 and that's a strong race for him. And Keyvan's ready to win as well. Magnus Rain, I know it was the right play to pinch him and get forward. But that's all. Once he shows he's right, he's close. He generally springs again. So I think that old boy's going to win out win in front of him. Yeah, I'll agree with that. So that's it's a funny one because it's race nine yeah. and the two year olds are race one. When you compare them, just on the raw times, you think, wow, what's going on here? But I think it's just a product of one being run at, you know. Well, one was under lights. Under lights. <laughs> and the other one being at 12 o'clock or whatever, Tom they were the first. And, you know, 100 horses going over the track in the meantime. And I just want to reiterate, I want to withdraw all my remarks about the previous race <laughs> and go and watch the replay again. <laughs> And I'll make a comment on it next week. Well, we'll yeah. We all make blues, punters. Yeah. Um, that'll do us for part one. We'll be back with What About the Punters in part two.